Good morning. You're with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. Uh, we are meeting this morning to uh, hear some <clears throat> perspectives on the creation of a task force to study and um, come up with recommendations on reducing our pensions liability. And I wanted to invite uh, Mike O'Neill, the Vermont Troopers Association, to share some thoughts with us. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Good morning. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. For the record, my name is Mike O'Neill. I'm the executive director of the Troopers Association. Um, I'll be fairly quick. In, in reviewing the draft yesterday uh, in the makeup of the task force, I see that the VTA wasn't given any representation there. And our members feel it is very important that we be represented, the other unions are being represented there. We clearly have a vested interest in the outcome of whatever the task force makes for recommendations. And we would really like to have the committee consider that we be represented. Um, the other comment I would have is it looks like the timeframes that the task force is going to have to work look like it's very short. Um, you know, July 15th to September 1st, I would really question if that gives them enough time to effectively complete the work that they need to be doing. You know, would a day of October 15th and November 1st make more sense to ensure they have the time necessary to complete this work? Thank you. Um, so just for context for folks who are maybe following along on the YouTube stream, um, the, uh, the troopers in Vermont are, are a small part of the state employees pension plan. So we're, we're looking at solving the challenges within the state employees and the teachers pension plan. Um, and you all have a, a very unique um, uh, position within the state employees plan um, because as law enforcement officers, uh, your, your uh, line of work is, is more dangerous, your pension benefits are, um, are different and your contribution rates uh, as employees are, um, are higher than the other um, members of that state employees union. Can you, um, can you just remind me how many active employees um, you have that are in group D right now? I mean, group C. Uh, we have about 270 to 280. It depends on vacancies. VSEA does have members in group C. They represent the state police lieutenants and other state law enforcement. Mm -hmm. So I think total, there are about, I believe it's 400 active members in group C and the VTA represents 270 to 280 of them somewhere in that ballpark. Great. Thank you. That's helpful context for folks who are um, maybe not uh, not familiar with the landscape around our pension system. Um, Rob LeClaire. Um, good morning, Madam Chair. Thank you. Good morning, Mike. Thanks for being here. Um, I have a couple of questions. One, um, how would you envision your group's participation being in this um, if this endeavor as far as, would it be you? Would there be other members? Uh, I've had a brief conversation with my president about that. I assume they would want me to do that. I don't know if you would give us one seat or two seats like VSEA and NEA have, and we would have another member as well. But since I'm the one that is the most up to date on what's going on with retirement and understand the issues the best, I assume they would want me there. I see. And I think like you, I share some concerns about the timeline. Um, my question would be, how quick could somebody like you get up to speed and be prepared to participate in these type of conversations? Uh, I think I can get up to speed fairly quickly. I've been following all of this from the beginning, um, starting with meetings with the treasurer. And I've been following these issues probably starting back in 2008, the last time there was a commission established to study the retirement system. So I know the issues fairly well. I by no means am an expert in the retirement issues. I never will be. I think as your committee learned, they're very complicated issues. Um, that take a lot of understanding to get to a point of really being 
informed on them. Just another quick question, and um, every group is different, but in yours, uh, these conversations obviously would be very fluid, and you'd have to get back to certain people for feedback and, and get them up to speed. Do you end up interacting with like an executive council? Do you end up having to try to get back to the your whole group? How does that work traditionally? Um, generally, we get back to we have an executive board, um, and it's a yeah, it's much smaller than the other unions because we're a smaller union. We can meet fairly quickly. The uh, meetings on Zoom have actually become very effective for us, something we had never done in the past, but it's very easy to put together a quick meeting. So yes, we can get back to our board fairly quickly and make decisions. Very good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bob Hooper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Bob. Uh, I think, you know, I fully agree with you. The more seats at the table, the impact of people, the better. Um, when you threw out the number of 400, were you talking about troopers and command structure in C, or were you talking about C entirely? C entirely. I believe Thank the you. active members in C entirely are around 400. Um, thanks. You're 100% right. This is complicated. It deserves a deep dive. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Mark Higley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mike. Um, Good morning. I agree as well as a timeline. I know uh, I checked in with uh, Representative Lefebvre uh, after a discussion yesterday. I, I wasn't here for that, but um, um, I don't see why uh, this task force couldn't meet prior to the July 15th uh, timeframe. So I'm glad to hear that uh, you could gear up before then. And I guess we just have to hear from others as to, you know, when, when they're able to gear up. But uh, that would certainly... That, I would certainly feel better about that. Thank you. Peter Anthony. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. O'Neill. I, I uh, wanted to relay a suggestion I made uh, on the heels of, of understanding that there was a uh, tension between keeping the task force at a manageable size and yet making sure we dug into the uh, unusual group within the broader state employees category, of which VSB is obviously one. And I said, well, what would it be, uh, would it be workable if we had a periodic subcommittees that were focused on, on particular groups who have very divergent uh, interests and very divergent plans? I was thinking of VSB, also the judiciary, which are are very uh, unlike virtually any other group in state government. And I just thought that might be a cure, uh, not to have you feel left out, but at the same time, make sure that uh, your the unusualness of your group uh, has respectful due attention. I don't know if that's workable, but it was an idea to keep the group from growing and growing and growing. So if you could comment, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I don't think that's a bad idea, but I would say, although our group is unique and the benefits are different, we face the same issues. You know, the, the retirement system is funded as one fund, the state employee system, it is one fund. We are all combined as there's been conversation about. And I think the issues we face are the same as all other state employees. The, the funding problems are not unique just to the state police. They are one in common for everybody. And I would prefer that we be part of the larger group in the discussion. Any other questions for Mike O'Neill? Bob Hooper. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I apologize for not hitting this earlier. Uh, Mike, this is a, a bill that has two components in it. One of it is the committee, the other is the underlying structure of VPIC. You're familiar with that and uh, where it's gonna go. Do you have any comments on what would seem to be the diminishment of member input on that body? <clears throat> I wasn't really gonna get into this because although I do see that there is not a lot of employee representation there, I don't think I can honestly speak on the best way to manage investments and you know, how that can be done the most effectively. The interest of our members 
is exactly that, that the management of the funds be done as effectively as possible in that we're successful going forward. So I don't think I have the expertise to say what way of doing that is the best. Thanks, Mike. All right, so um, I very much appreciate you taking time to, uh, to come and share your thoughts with us this morning. Um, just echoing back what I heard you say that VTA would like a seat at the table and you believe the timeline is a bit too tight. Uh, you would be able to start as soon as uh, the task force is able to form and you think it's reasonably gonna take till October or November to, to get through this work. Yes, I would agree. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And um, so uh, Bob Hooper, your hand is still up. Do you have a question? No, but I, I did manage to mute myself immediately, so. <laughs> it, I know it's really difficult to, um, to, to get all of, those, uh, all of those Zoom clicks done in an appropriate order. Um, so committee, that is all we have uh, for this early morning session. We will be back in committee at 1030. And uh, so I appreciate that everyone got promptly to their computer at nine o'clock and, and Mike O'Neill, thank you so much for, um, for being with us. Thank you committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, Peter Anthony. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I wonder if, we shouldn't ourselves caucus about uh, in respect to our own availability uh, since this timeline uh, issue is undoubtedly going to come up uh, on, and raised by other potential participants. I, I, I don't know what my colleagues have available for summertime. I love to garden, but I, this is my first job, and so uh, the gardening will have to wait. But um, I don't know about my colleagues and uh, maybe we should decide or at least have a glimmer as to when we could get to work and whether we could or couldn't work into the fall and respecting teachers' schedule being different than ours, different than the VSB, uh, try and, and have an answer to those kinds of issues as they come up. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Peter. I, uh, I appreciate the suggestion. Um, I guess at the end of the day, I would say that the appointments to this uh, task force on pensions uh, will be made by the speaker. And I would presume that she will check with whoever she desires to appoint to the task force uh, to see if they're available. So, um, we will come back at 1030 for some more testimony and, uh, and to have uh, some committee discussion perhaps after the floor this afternoon. Um, and then we've got a few more entities that we need to hear from um, to get their perspective on the governance and the task force. Um, uh, just for the uh, sort of overall expectation, um, you know, I, we need to be thinking about moving this bill out um, by early next week uh, so that the Senate has time to consider. Uh, as you know from normal sessions, and I guess for the benefit of our uh, new members who maybe don't know this, uh, as we move towards adjournment, um, the Senate uh, shuts down half of their committees in, you know, with a couple of weeks before um, session ends. And so we want to make sure that we get this bill over to them so that they can give full consideration to, uh, to the task force and the governance changes. Um, and so that, that is the sense of urgency in getting this bill moving. Uh, any other questions before we sign off? Rob LeClaire? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. And I would encourage you to emphasize that, that there is a sense of urgency here. Um, in conversations with the administration yesterday, they're, they're meeting with the bonding agencies as we're speaking right now. So um, there truly is a sense of urgency to at least get a plan in place. Yep. Thank you. Bob Hooper. 
I, I, there's some weird thing going on here between Rob and I in the atmosphere. I don't know what it is, but it has to stop. Um, I wanted to bring up the issue of moving the 150 million forward, uh, whether that's going to be on our agenda. I think that has a direct impact on cost, immediate cost, and also whether we're going to address in the context of OPEB, um, the plan holiday issue, which also is a couple million bucks that could go where it needs to go as opposed to where somebody has the discretion of throwing it. Um, good points to keep track of. Um, not to not to punt on that one, but the those money decisions are uh, are above my pay grade, um, but I will bring them up when I uh, have my next meeting with the speaker uh, who is in contact with the appropriations chair. Um, and uh, you are more than welcome to express your opinion to her as well. Is the, has there been a change in our earlier mandate that we were gonna make recommendations for the 150 and? Mike McCarthy, are you raising your hand to update us on, on that? Thank you. Yeah, so my understanding in conversations with the speaker and what she said publicly last week was that with the formation of the task force, we were gonna leave the options open with a hundred, I mean, in regard to the $150 million. So to the question about the um, premium holiday, that's another one. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna be in our purview here or not, but in terms of the $150 million, the speaker made it absolutely abundantly clear that her desire and our mandate was to form the task force and work on governance. And at the $150 million, as it was passed here, will remain in, or as it was passed by our body in the budget, uh, will remain in reserve. And, you know, we'll uh, be able to hear what the task force has to say. So that's, that's what we heard from the speaker last week. That's what I've been operating under the assumption. That is my recollection as well. All right, um, any other questions before we sign off? All right, thank you committee and we'll be back.